It's a phrase from popular movies. It's also a question that comes up in our daily life. The question is, is that even legal? We talk about the things that drive you crazy, the things you won't believe, and the things you need to know and understand. I'm attorney Bob Sewell, and this is the podcast, Is That Even Legal? Let's get started. On the show here today, we have Warren Schlichting. Now, Warren is the CEO of Legal Shield. He has an extensive background as an executive in other companies. He worked for a company called Poly, which is a communications company and a hardware company, a tech company. And he's done things for Dish Network, Sling TV as an executive. And so he comes here today with an extensive background. And I think you're relatively new at Legal Shield. Am I right? That's right. Um, December 1st. Uh, so only 10 weeks in, although it seems longer. You know, this is, this is an, an interesting switch for you. And you have been like in the, in the technology background and you've been in the media background. What brought you to this company and what makes you, and what are you thinking you're going to be doing here at Legal Shield? That's different. Yeah, well, you know, so first of all, thanks, Bob. It's nice to be on your show, and it's nice to meet you over Zoom. Um, look, I've had a, uh, I've been lucky. I've had a varied career, um, and uh, I, uh, you know, I grew up as a small town kid in Milford, Kansas, town of less than a thousand. And so this this job um, kind of came out of nowhere. It had it has this great community element, uh, um, and that's incredibly important, you know, in a small town. And Eight Oklahoma is pretty small. It, it's got a subscription uh, membership base, and I'm used to working with subscription, you know, from pay TV. And it's just it's got a great mission. So great product, great mission, um, small town community feel that checks a lot of boxes for me. Um, so I went from skeptic to evangelist in about eight months. I have to say, when I first heard about it, I shook my head a little bit. Some of the numbers were too good to believe. The product NPS scores were higher than anything I'd seen in pay TV for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so little by little, yeah, exactly. You know, pay TV was down there with the IRS. Um, so maybe that's not a great comparison, but literally NPS scores that are rivaling Southwest Airlines and Starbucks and uh, American Express. And those are three leaders. You know, those are lofty numbers. So that product part, I think the quantitative piece of the product assessment got me hooked uh, or or led me to keep going and, and keep searching it's and a... uh, re researching the company. And, and the mission kind of just tackled me. It was, it's just... I think in the in the past with pay TV and others, I've imagined that I was on a mission providing entertainment at a low cost. And you can imagine making that up as you go, trying to justify what you're doing. This is a real mission. This is a true mission. And it just feels so good to be here. Um, so yeah. long answer to your question, but this is unlike any company I've ever worked for in the past. I could not agree with you more. One of the things that, you know, we, the firm I work for is the contract provider for Legal Shield. And one of the things that makes me proud to do it is the access to justice element. So we have fantastic lawyers. We have a, fan, a deep, deep bench. And we provide that bench to the members. And, and we're able to deliver a certain amount of access to justice that is enviable from any firm any firm anywhere in the country, in the world, in fact. And, you know, in Arizona, I don't know if you're aware of this, but access to justice has been a huge mission. And in the, in the bar, in, in the, at the bar level, and they're trying all sorts of things to try to make the access to justice happen for more and more people in Arizona. And, and I frankly think that the, the whole method they go about it 
and the, what they're doing is wrong, that doesn't work. But what t does work is what we have here today. Um, one of the things that I really, really like and something I'm passionate about is that someone could come to, you know, Legal Shield and get a free will and a free, uh, you know, not, I guess it's not free. It's for your small s subscription. You know, you get a will, a power of attorney, a living will, a healthcare power of attorney. These things are really important. Does How does that affect you knowing that what we're actually doing is trying to give access to justice? Yeah, it's uh, it's part of. Um, well, you know, look, let me let me be honest. I've, I've worked on um, a lot of big, big deals, multi billion dollar deals, and um, I know dozens and dozens of attorneys. And um, I guess I just didn't realize that there's an entirely different group of attorneys that um, perhaps don't focus on these mega deals. And instead, you know, really went to law school to help people. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I had a conversation uh, with an MD the other day, a friend of mine, and, you know, somehow a medical doctor saying, um, I went to medical school to help people is, is worthy and it's not that uh, uncommon and it's very acceptable. So why... Does it seem more unusual when an attorney says that? Anyway, in my experience, <laughs> for whatever reason, it may yeah. have just been spending too much time in the wrong conference rooms. Um, but, you know, as we fought it out and we litigated it, so my, my experience of litigation and, and duking it out in the octagon on these giant contracts that I used to negotiate, and to hear this sort of the purity of attorneys that say, we're here to help now, it's a business for sure, but to be able to do both, you know, make a good living and help is, is something that I just it hadn't crossed my radar before. And frankly, I had to look, I dug really hard. I'm a cynic. So I was wondering if, if, if I was hearing the right things, but, um, but I believe now I've visited enough firms and enough people like you, Bob, that say, you know, that they really are uh, a part of our mission and I can't thank you enough. And I'm so appreciative to be here. Yeah. You know, one, I, I enjoy what I do and I, and I, um, <clears throat> I work in an area called probate and trust litigation. So if you're dying, you end up, you know, my services come into play. If you're dead, your family will hire me for my, your services. And what I do involves people whose planning went wrong or people who failed to plan. And one of those yes. things is something called a, a guardian conservatorship. So if you get a legal shield plan and you take advantage of the plan and you actually call up your attorneys on the in the legal shield network and you say, hey, I got a problem. Uh, how am I supposed to, you know, I'm facing down my, the, my parent who is, who is getting older and I'm, I'm concerned about this. What do I do? The result is you can get, you could plan. And for, you know, l very little money in comparison, you know, guardianship starts out about 3500 to $5,000 a year depending on the work that needs to go into it. Conservatorship can get upwards of $10,000 a year. Well, or I could avoid all that pain uh, by simply having a phone call saying, I, I, I want to make... Yeah. Now, now, obviously, my business is because people fail to plan. So I, you know, but it's really nice that you guys are out there trying to educate people, trying to help them avoid that sort of legal pain and the money outlay. Where do you see, you have, you have a different style hey, than other hey, people. Bob, Go ahead. I was just going to pile on there for a second. Um, you know, uh, my dad passed uh, last year and yeah. you know, he had lived to, uh, you know, the age of 95. So all good on that front. But as I was cleaning out, um, you know, all of his papers and I'm now the executor of his estate, you know, I looked at um, some of that. So first of all, my parents weren't, you know, they're very modest means. 
Um, but they had actually gone to uh, to get a, a will uh, um, created. A uh, small town attorney did it for them, and good person. Uh, I actually met him. All good in so many ways, but the will itself was a fill in the blank will, and the, the price even twenty years ago would pay for many years of legal shield. Yeah. And it just struck me like what a tremendous value you and your uh, brethren offer. I guess I shouldn't say brethren, brethren and sister. And, yeah. Um, but it's just an awesome product and an awesome value. And I'm just so thankful that, you know, of what you were just talking about, that you're there to, to pick up the ball for people that either have planned or haven't planned. You know, it's it's uh, it's truly it truly feels good to be able to offer that. You you have a you're going to have a different leadership style than you, the person who came before. You're going to have um, different goals. What's your vision for the for the? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, and you know we should check back in a year and see how much it's changed. Now, to be fair, I've never been short on uh, having a vision. Um, so we'll, we'll put a stake down or a, a, a marker down here. And uh, but. The, um, you know, when I think about uh, this company, I had this idea that popped into my head and I can't, I can't shake it. And it's, if I were raising venture capital, and I've certainly done that in my career as well. And I said, I've got a gig economy company only better from an employment standpoint, right? You've heard some of the issues with gig economy companies, so all the good and none of the bad. If I said, hey, I've got a company that's that uh, takes advantage of people who want to work remote and who um, help people that, you know, are part time either, you know, um, as an attorney or elsewhere. And I've got a highly disruptive business model. You know, if you think of the legal system writ large as broken and access to justice based on how much you can pay. Coming into a venture capitalist and saying, I've got a disruptive model that levels the playing field, I'm confident I could raise hundreds of millions of dollars and we would have the next unicorn on our hands. So let's do that. Yeah. My vision is to go and, and actually lead this company to, to much more explosive growth and highlight some of these incredible features that in a way, we I think everybody that's a part of the company has gotten a little bit used to, you know? If you imagine this as a brand new business plan, it's an awesome plan. It just happens to be 50 years old. In a way, Harlan Stonecipher was way, way, way ahead of his time. And so my my job, my vision, I think, is to make this company much better known. Like, why doesn't every household, why isn't it a household name? Why, why, why did I, why had I never heard of it uh, before, you know, the headhunter called me? So my vision is actually to, communicate much better to highlight all of the great things about this company um, and really see if we can't take it to the next level. You, you had just yeah. mentioned MPS scores, and that's something that most law firms aren't going to know about and deal with. What's an MPS score? Yeah, you know, thanks. I mentioned it, but I should have explained a little bit further because it's so critically important. A net promoter score um, is a very simple survey. Um, you are either a promoter and you would recommend a company, you're a detractor and you would not recommend, or you're neutral. And it's deceptively um, clever because it really shows you over, you know, it, 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 it's a customer satisfaction number that is um, comparable across companies and across industries. And so, as a, for instance, the, the highest I ever had at Sling in terms of NPS scores was a 37. And 37 is actually pretty good. I think it immediately dropped the next weekend when we took uh, stations down, but we had it for a minute. Uh, by comparison, uh, Legal Shield is in the mid 50s. And that is rarefied air in terms of customer satisfaction. Now, think about that. We're not selling highly caffeinated coffee. Right. They're legal services, and you're on the phone with an attorney 
probably because you have a problem or an issue. And then after that call, you get a survey and those NPS scores are the result of those surveys. And you're, you, we, you know, our members in general talk about Legal Shield as if it's one of the most highly rated companies in the U.S. So that is, um, I was saying earlier, when I was a little skeptical about uh, just, you know, who Legal Shield was and what they did, that was the first hook into me to say, hey, this is a great company. Look, look harder. Yeah. You know, I- I'm going to speculate as to why, you know, people call and they have a legal problem. And when they get you know, it, whatever that legal problem is, and just knowing an answer, just hearing an answer clears the mind, right? Even if it's not what you want to hear. I mean, that could, it, and I get that a lot where people come in, they say, well, I think X. And I say, well, no, that, you're wrong. Uh, let's look at why you're wrong. Now let's reframe this. This is what you can actually accomplish. Do you want to try to do go that direction? Your direction might harm you. Oh, really? It would harm me? Yeah. And just showing a little compassion, showing uh, a little, uh, uh, being blunt. People walk out and they say, oh, you know, I appreciated that. You know, he didn't fill me with a bunch of crap. He actually told me the way it was. It's a weird experience. I'll well, be it's honest. A, it's, I'm glad you said compassion because I think the empathy um, it's a person to person consultation, which is awesome. And then think about that. The person on the other end of the line typically has empathy and expertise. That's a killer combination for somebody that has very little experience with the legal system and may view it as just sort of this big impenetrable wall and is put off dealing with some problem for a long, long time. I actually speak to a trusted person who is expert and empathetic, that is a great, I, I, you know, I've obviously dug down and tried to explain the NPS scores for myself. And that's, that's what I come up with expert and empathetic um, to our members needs. You have a really interesting background because you have, have, there's a lot of tech issues. You're going to be dealing with a lot of tech issues and what's new, what's coming up in, in your past career. Lawyers aren't known for tech, right? We are known for being cogity, you know, we, we're stuck in our ways. We're not known for innovation. And in fact, the law generally is to try to keep things the way that way it was and and avoid innovation. That's that's what it feels like when you're in the law. So you know, what, you know, and now we're starting to see things like Chat GPT, and everyone's getting attention, giving attention to that because they somehow got Chat GPT to pass a bar exam, which blows my mind. Um, and that and that's a tech bot where you could ask the tech bot question and then it'll spit out some sort of answer. Yeah. You know, we had a lawyer on this podcast that talked about, you know, how we're going to have AI in in the law come up more and more. Um, it's still earlier time as Legal Shield, but are you seeing, in terms of technology, some sort of enhancement to your to a an experience a user could have or a member could have? Um, you know, I know you have an app already. What What are you seeing in the future with technology? Well, uh, it's a great question. Uh, and I obviously uh, love technology and, and tech innovation, but I'll give you a couple of thoughts. One is you can teach a computer to play chess, uh, as we've seen, and they've become incredibly expert. And I, I equate that more closely to passing a bar exam. But... I still don't think I'd want that chess playing computer or the the chat bot that passes the bar exam to give me advice. Yeah, And that's where the human element um, that all of us have uh, in common, I think makes a difference. And I don't see that difference going away. Now, can we, can we use that as a tool? Can we actually use um, these new, uh, this open, AI, all these open AI innovations. Absolutely. So tech enabled, 
business and helping the relationships become uh, more fluid and efficient. Um, I think there's a lot of innovation to be done there. And that's where we like to hang out. But we're not a tech company. We're a relationships company that is tech enabled. And I think we'll do, you'll see a lot more innovation from us, but the relationship still comes first. I, I agree. You know, one of the things that I do as an attorney that is, is help people write their story, right? They come in, they're flustered about the problem and they, and they tell me this jumble of thoughts and the jumble of things that happened. And my job is to turn that into a story that makes sense. And AI doesn't necessarily do that, right? But it's not yeah. just a thing that makes sense. It's something that people can emotionally connect with, right? A story that people emotionally understand. AI doesn't do that. Not, not yet. Um, maybe someone will figure out how to put emotions into a chat bot, but I don't know. What do you like to do on your spare time? Great question. Um, I have a lot less of it now than I did a few months ago, um, <laughs> but um, I wasn't very good at uh, just riding my bike all day. Um, so I like riding bikes. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm not terribly um, proficient at it, um, but I love riding bikes and I love fishing. I mean, fishing is my first love. And if I can ever find a place, you know, Colorado is great for that. If I can ever find my uh, find a place where I can ride my bike and go fishing, um, <laughs> I'm pretty much in heaven. Now, there are a couple of places up in the mountains where you can actually ride a bike to the stream, and that's a good day. Yeah, there is nothing better than that. Um, so before is there before I let you go, I got two more questions. The first question is: Is there something you're dying to tell us? About, that you'd like us to know? Well, you know, uh, here is something that I talk about a lot and I, it's kind of always in the center of my forehead as I think about things. Founder DNA, um, Harland and Shirley Stonecipher were the founders of this great company. Yeah. And as a, a three-time entrepreneur, my wife might actually say five, depends on how you count, that I really put a lot of value in founder DNA and I just think it's it's headquartered in Ada, Oklahoma. You know, like it or not, that's where the founder DNA resides. And I feel like we need to brush off that founder DNA a little bit. It's been 10 years, I think, since Harlan passed. But we need to keep that alive uh, with the provider firms like yourselves, with all of our members and with all of the people that work in the business. That That's, uh, that's probably the most sort of that, that's the burning issue. It's hard to quantify. It's hard to put it into words, but founder DNA is really important. Keep, keep the mission alive. Yeah. Yes. And don't, don't lose sight of the mission. You know, it's easy to go off in so many different directions that are sort of mission related and mission adjacent. Don't forget the mission. Keep it alive and keep it moving forward. What about uh, getting me into a movie? Can you do that? <laughs> Who can you hook me That's up? That's an with? awesome question. Well, you know, I do have uh, more than a couple of folks that are, um, you know, running media companies. Uh, you know what, Bob? Uh, let's check back in a year, and if you haven't been on a movie, then then uh, that's on me. All right, that sounds good. All right, thanks for com coming on the show, Warren. Hey, really appreciate it. This is great. Thanks for listening to. Is that even legal? Remember, this isn't legal advice. If you have a legal question for yourself, reach out to an attorney. Remember that we're fun, we're lovable, and we are here to help you. To my listeners in 62 countries across the world, if you have something you want to explore, email us at producer at evenlegal.com. And don't be shy about leaving a review for this podcast on your favorite podcast forum. See you next time.